Today we're going to look at a couple of guns here. We're going to see which one of these is best for the job of EDC. And one thing right off the bat that is, uh, is obvious is one smaller than the other. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the one. But we'll look at these and uh, we'll see who wins this contest. Then we'll go into some details about each one. They're both excellent guns. And uh, I've got this written down very carefully uh, here on a list. We're gonna go over this list. Got my Sharpie here handy. We're just gonna put a dot on each one of these and see if we can get one of these to meet all the criteria. And uh, hopefully this will help you. Maybe you've uh, never bought a pistol for everyday carry. Here in Arkansas, we've got the uh, constitutional carry now. The uh, Second Amendment to the Constitution gives you the right to keep and bear arms. So Arkansas has uh, followed that constitution very, uh, very rigorously and just said, uh, if you want to carry a gun out in the open, you can. You don't have to have a special concealed carry license or any kind of license. You just need a gun and a good attitude and strap it on your hip and you're good to go. So here's what I've got for EDC carry. So the first thing on the list, and this is uh, many, many years of dealing with this, the first one that I wanted, this is for my wife, and I'm a hand loader, so I can make her any kind of bullet that she wants. But the very first thing on the list is it had to be 45 caliber. So both of these meet this that criteria. This gun you're looking at here is a Stingray built by TSAS. You can pronounce that different ways. Uh, T-I-S-A-S. -S. Some people say t -shosh. I can't do that, so just t -shosh. And this one is a Springfield armory range officer so that has to meet uh, the caliber must be 45 so 45 ACP so we've already got that one both meet that the barrel length needs to be 4.25 to be like a commander Colt used to build one called a commander it was 4.25 and that's extremely popular with uh, people that carry guns for uh, concealment or for open carry just something a little easier to manage a little lighter weight is uh, 4.25 so we'll go ahead and let this guy retire for the evening he's gonna be out of the picture for right now still a good gun and we'll focus our attention on this little guy this one is our our nice t -sauce. Um it is a four and a quarter it's 45 caliber and this is the stingray so let's see what else. Uh, the frame needs to be a government size frame, meaning the part you put your hand on needs to be full government size, and it is, and needs to be bobtail. That just cuts off a little bit of weight and also makes this a little bit easier on your body, up against your ribs or up against your seat belt, your seat in your car, or your clothing. It just makes it a little easier to carry. So it has to be bobtail, government size, hand grip, nothing chopped off there except for the little bobtail. Uh, also, the slide needs to be forged steel. So we've got that, that's what they use is forged steel. The barrel needs to be a cold hammer forged stainless steel barrel. Check, we got that. The frame material in this particular gun, I wanted it to be aluminum. And this is an aluminum frame. This whole lower portion is aluminum. And then you got the G10 grip. So material for the frame is aluminum, got that. The sights need to be three dot full dovetail, meaning the way they put this gun together needs to have dovetail cut on the top of the slide and front and rear and needs to have three dots. So it met that requirement, that's pretty easy. Okay, what else? Thumb safety, my wife is a lefty, so it needs to have thumb safety on this side and also be able to flip it over and have an ambidextrous thumb safety. Let's check it out, make sure that works. So left-hander, you've got it right there. And uh, that thing's pretty crisp. I put a new spring in it. A Wilson Combat, extra heavy duty, so it's real nice and snickety. Snick, snick, snick. That's what you want in a thumb safety. So it is a ambidextrous, so we got that taken care of. Let's see what else we got here. Thumb safety. Uh, the recoil guide rod needs to be the short GI. Let's check that real quick. We can do a press check and check that. So finger in here, one right there, press check. Yep, it's got the short guide rod. You can't do that. If it's got a full length guide rod, 
You can't do a press check like that. You'd have to do an overhand. But uh, there's your quick press check. Got the shorty guide rods. So that's good. That's good. Okay, for serrations on the slide, we want those to be on the rear only to keep the classic look of the old slab side government gun. So that's what we've got. We've got some fish scales and they're cut really sharp. So they do not let go of your hand, but they are on the rear only. So that takes care of that. That's done. Okay, equipment rail. This is for people who want to have a laser or a light mounted on the front of the gun. We want that to be a none. So you can see this is sans equipment rail. No equipment rail. Nice and clean like it should be for a carry gun. We're not putting laser, flashlight, or bayonet or none of that nonsense. Just nice and clean for my wife. Uh, the grip has to be a high ride beaver tail. Let's see if we got that. Yep, sure enough. Don't have to worry about her ever getting any hammer bites. Got the nice high ride beaver tail built right in. So that's good. Check. All right, what else? Uh, the hammer and the trigger both need to be skeletonized. Check that out. The hammer is uh, skeletonized, delta hammer. We've got the Videcki style cutout skeletonized uh, trigger and it looks good. So that's two things uh, that take place there. It's going to take us up to 20 things that it has to meet. Uh, the grips need to be G10. Now I have changed these from the factory, but the factory ones were a sunburst and they were black and they were G10. But she wanted to have this gun metal that kind of ties the black of the upper to the gray of the lower. And I got these from Cool Hand. They were, uh, I believe, about 19 bucks, uh, under $20 for this nice set of grips. And it does have the little cutout here for your. Uh, magazine release so very nice G10 grip so that was done now this next one's a little trickier the weight has to be under 30 ounces so let's uh, let's check that out now this is an empty gun totally empty gun no magazine we just want to weigh the gun has to meet the criteria of being under 30 ounces can it do it so first we're going to turn on the scales brand new kitchen scales and let me see what I got them set to. I was weighing some puppies earlier. We don't want grams. We don't want kilograms. We don't want pounds and ounces. We just want regular old ounces. There we go. So we use regular old ounces. And I'll hit my tear and make sure we're zeroed. Hopefully this will show up on the camera. And we'll set that right there very carefully, not slam it down. I'll stand up and see what we got here. Okay, 26.2 ounces. So we met the criteria on that, 26.2. I'm very happy with that. That's well under 30. Let's go ahead and throw the magazine in there from the factory mag and see what that bumps it up to. Now we'll be talking about the gun with its mag. And that puts us up to uh, 28.8. And uh, that's pretty good. That's really good, so I'm happy with that. I'm not going to throw any ammo into the equation because I just wanted you to see the gun, so now you can see the gun alone right there. So it met that criteria, no problem at all. I'm going to go ahead and turn the scale off. Let him rest over there where him was and bring the gun back. So we can knock that one off the list. Under 30, we made it. All right, the coating, I did not want hers to be parkerized or uh, blued, you know, something that would rust easy. I wanted her to have a Cerakote. So the lower and the upper both Cerakoted, which is a, a pretty durable finish. Not as durable as hard chrome or as pure stainless, but it's pretty durable. So Cerakote, got that, met that criteria. Capacity has to be seven or eight. And I've got both mags for it. This will hold a seven round mag or an eight round mag. So got that. This next criteria is really tough really tough and that is the internals have to have no MIM parts this gun believe it or not I have had it all apart it has no small lettering no parting lines no small circles to show where the injection uh, mold has been trimmed in any way so all the pieces inside this gun are steel pieces no MIM and the last but definitely not least is the price has to be under $650. This gun came in at $629 out the door, tax and all. $629, that is hard to beat. So price under $650, and 
and that met that requirement. So I'll put this where you can read it. Hopefully you can. I know on a small phone, if you're looking at, or I should say a phone on YouTube instead of the big computer, you can zoom in on that. But this is the criteria that I use for my wife's gun. And it gives her what, uh, we both talked about this at great length. This is a very easy gun to carry. Now, when I got it, I will tell you this, it did have a problem and that is it was oversprung to the max. The recoil spring was oversprung. I took it out and put in a nice 14 pounds. So now it's buttery smooth on cocking it. The uh, hammer spring, which is the main spring right here, was uh, the full size, supposed to be a 23. It was probably a 30 pound. I reduced that down to an 18 pound. So now the hammer is much easier to cock, which you're doing that when you, when you cycle a slide, you're cocking the hammer. So you're working against the main spring and you're working the recoil spring both simultaneously, but this gun is now smooth, very easy. And I went and did a trigger job for her. I've got her at 2.25 pounds on the trigger. You've got one pound to take up and then 1.25 more pounds to get it to break and it's silky smooth. It is nice crisp, like the proverbial glass rod. And I love that, man, I'm tell you what, you got a good trigger, it will really help you learn to shoot with accuracy. Now, my wife's not a beginner. I would not give somebody a 2.25 pound trigger if they were a beginner because you're probably gonna have some issues. But like I say, the one pound take up, that gives you a good crisp reset so that you don't accidentally get hammer follow. See, I'm holding the trigger down. It did not follow, I let it go. Hold the trigger down, cock it, it did not follow, let it go and it'll go click. So these are very nice little guns. If you'd like to get yourself a carry gun in a 45 ACP, something that'll hold seven or eight rounds, and it's got that nice big bore of the 45. Now, some people will tell you, well, I can't shoot a 45. It's too much for me. This is a low pressure round. It comes in uh, at 21,000 pounds of pressure max and the nine millimeter is just about twice that at 38,000 pounds of pressure. So don't believe everything that you hear on the internet because uh, you can hand load, which I do for my wife, and that's what we've got right here. So you can see this load. This is a 230 grain. It's this right here, nice berry bullets. Boy, they send that in a nice box, got the US flag on it. And these things are just like, it's like gold, man. It's just, look at those things. They're just beautiful. And that is not a copper full metal jacket bullet. That is a lead bullet that has been double struck for accuracy. And it is electroplated with copper, a very thin coat, but you can shoot that without having to worry about leading your barrel. Plus the lubricity of the copper helps when that bullet hits the feed ramp it gives it something to slide and glide on. Uh, lead sometimes can be a little too soft and cause a gun to hang up with real soft lead. You get that copper coating on it, man, I'm telling you, that thing is nice. So I take these bullets, take some old brass from out in the yard, tumble it a little bit. I need to put some of these bullets back in there. See, they're trying to grow up. I put them in there like seeds and eventually they'll grow into real bullets. But uh, here's a good example. This is one of our hand loads for my wife. Now you can duplicate this if you are a hand loader, and if you're not, you need to be. This bullet right here is a used piece of brass, and I use all different name brands. I resize it, put a fresh primer in, and put 4.0 grains of bullseye. Four grains of bullseye, that's a nice, soft target load. It will still take out a bad guy. That bullet's gonna come out of the tube, out of the barrel at about 750 feet per second. It's never going to expand, but it's also never going to shrink. That's the beauty of the 45. And with the big barrel like that, what you end up with, instead of a high pitched bad attitude crack like the nine millimeters got, you get a boom. And instead of getting the flip of the wrist like you get with a nine millimeter or 357 or 40 cal, any high pressure round, instead of getting all that foolishness with a 45, 
you get the bass boom and then on your on your uh, actual impulse you'll get a push you'll get a boom like that it just feels different it's a low pressure high caliber big bore slower bullet say well you can't shoot 200 yards like you do with a nine millimeter well friend if you're using this gun for self-protection your distance that you're going to be firing at seven yards i mean it just is if you're out in the yard and you're shooting at a bad guy from 50 yards away you're probably going to have a lot of problem with your jury because he's already on his way to leaving and uh you really can't do that somebody trying to steal your lawnmower and you go trying to pick them pick them off at 40 50 yards with a short barrel pistol and a 45 that that's not not a good plan at all don't ever do that but if it comes down to life or limb and somebody's right up in your face and uh, they're trying to get a hold of you then you need something it does not have to be super accurate but i can tell you this gun is more accurate than i am i've gone out in the yard and shot small rocks with it size of a bottle cap at about 10 paces out there in the yard and i can just dot them i can either bury them in the mud or i can shoot right below the edge of them send them flying in the air i've shot soda cans with this at 15 yards out in the pond and had no problem at all sinking a soda can uh, small pieces of wood I've shot bricks with it at 25 yards and able to bust them into pieces on a consistent basis, regular red bricks. Cinder blocks are very easy to hit at 25. But a very accurate little gun. But you need something you can draw out, you can handle. Let me show you a, a holster that we've got with this. And this is something that my wife really likes. When she does her open carry, she's lefty. So left-handed kind of a deal, what she does yeah, she can carry this on her left hip with a nice belt. We've got the uh, hammer cock safety zone. We're pretending like it's loaded, but that would go on her left hip. And then when you put the belt through there, you tighten your belt down real good and tight and cinch that belt through these loops. Make sure you got a belt loop in here so it's captured. And cinch that belt through a nylon belt, something that you can really tighten down like your you know, nylon on a log truck and cinch it down tight and then keep this oiled up with some nice uh, leather oil, mink uh, oil, and you just slide that in there and it'll be pretty tight. With this tight, it'll hold it. It's retention one, doesn't have any latches or locks, but my wife is uh, with me when we carry. I'm watching her, she's watching me, and we're, uh, we're pretty formidable to watch out for each other and we don't let anybody reach up there and start playing with the gun, we just don't do that. So this gun though, I'm telling you, it has met all that criteria that I showed you here and that's not the easiest thing to meet. Now, I'm going to tell you this, if you can forego the bottom there and also the MIM parts, there is another gun that I'll kind of point you towards. You can buy a gun similar to this that won't have the bobtail, but Springfield Armory has made a new gun called the Ronin. Now what the Ronin will have is it will have an aluminum lower frame like this. It'll be at a four and a quarter barrel. It won't have the bobtail. It'll have some MIM parts in it, but it will be, uh, it'll be a nice hammer forged barrel, hammer forged slide. It will be a forged aluminum lower, just like this one is forged, but uh, you will not be able to keep it at underneath 650. You're gonna be pushing on up into the 750 to 850 range about $200 more. But if you want to go American made and you're willing to spend another $200, you can still get meet all these criteria. Everything here will match except that you won't get the bobtail and uh, you will not get the uh, Cerakote. It will come with a blue, they call it a hot salt blue upper. It'll have aluminum lower but they're beautiful. They really are. They're a, they're a three color gun. It'll have the blue on the top. It'll have the silver uh, colored aluminum on the bottom. I think it is Cerakote. And then the grips will be the reddish looking grips in a wood grip instead of G10. They are laminated, so they're pretty nice. So that's three things it doesn't make. It won't have G10 grips. Grips are nothing on a pistol to me. That's just two screws. Uh, whether you use regular screws or the Torx, that's fine either way. And uh, that just grips are grips. That's not the gun. That's just a, that's a very personal preference thing. 
So there's something for you to consider for people that want to get out of the Paula mirror guns, get out of the tactical Tupperware, go back to old school. These 1911, some people say, well, they're just not that reliable. Listen, friend, if you build you some nice rounds, these happen to be a 1.23 inches, and this gun will gobble these up. I mean, it will load them so smooth and be ready to shoot. It's like just buttery smooth, no problem at all. And it ejects them good too, whether live rounds or uh, just brass, ejects it perfect. And I've got her set up with light spring in there, 14 pound recoil. So light load, so it doesn't beat the frame up. And it's a good shooting rig. So I hope this is encouraging to you. And we'll come back on the next uh, video. And we'll talk about this big boy right here. So don't uh, give up on me on that. We'll get back to the range officer and cover him. And uh, these have been done away with by Springfield, but they've got real nice replacements for that range officer. So we'll be back with you soon. Over and out for now.